Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Marius from Nendo Street. Uh, and this is going to be uh, not the normal talk I give uh, at such events. Uh, usually, I come and talk about Nendo Street, about what we do, uh, the great things we've done in the, in the past uh, period of time. But now, uh, I've decided to come and talk to you about something different, and more specifically, about freelancing. Uh, I know that the description of the talk in the presentation wasn't very clearly, but uh, this is it. So, uh, why freelancing? Um, first of all, is anyone in, in the room doing freelancing already? Can I have a show of hands? Okay, nice, thank you. Anyone uh, planning on taking up freelancing at, at uh, work? Okay, perfect. So, uh, you're in a moment in your life uh, where you study 3D, right? You, you learn to model, to animate, uh, to texture, everything, and you become, you get in a point where the force is strong with you. And then you work some more, and you, you manage to, to create the first awesome project, the, the first one that you really like how it came up. And then you feel like you're on top of the world. And uh, then comes a step uh, when you start asking yourself, well, how, what do I do with this knowledge? Uh, how do I make money out of it? Because freelancing, uh, if you want to make a career out of it, means making money. And this is uh, where things start to get tricky, because uh, aside from your 3D skills, which you already have, you need a separate set of skills that will allow you to uh, market yourself and this is the business side. And this is uh, mostly what I'm, I came here to talk to you about because there are so many tutorials, so many documentations, so many videos showing you how to model, how to create 3D work, but not so many uh, talking about the other side that you need to do in order to make a living out of it. So uh, why me? Why, why am I the right person to talk about this? So I started so, first of all, I've been an entrepreneur for 19 years now. Uh, I started as a freelancer doing contract work, uh, working mainly on, out of Elance. Uh, Elance is now Upwork. And uh, in time, w w I, got, I was working with my partner, Serene. We got more contracts and more and more and started hiring people. And then we built up a company out of this, and, uh, which had about 30 people doing outsource work. And then we sold that company and I was working as a C-level executive for a, a multinational company for a number of years. And then we, we started from scratch and built Rent in 2012. And this was a different ballgame because this was a service company, not a work for a hire company. And the circumstances were totally different. And now, seven years later, Rent is uh, a well-known company in the rendering space. So, the point to all of this is that I've experienced, I've had the chance to experience doing business from a lot of angles. So uh, I'd like to share some of those things with you. While you are probably just beginning your career as freelancers or just thinking about it. So I'd like to make a few points that hopefully will help you along the way. So uh, the, the social media boom that has happened in the past years has uh, touched all the aspects of our lives, whether you know it or not. Uh, and we, it will affect you as well uh, in your work. Why is that? Because whether you want to find a job uh, to get hired to start a position in a company, or you want to do freelance work and you bid on projects, you are competing with a lot more people than you, you, than you used to do uh, five or 10 years ago. So think about that. Uh, when you submit a bid for a project or you submit your resume for a job, there are a thousand more people doing the same thing. And the time that the recruiter or the person posting the job has to evaluate all those people is probably the same as five years ago. So it means it has less time to look at your resume or your showreel than it had five years ago. So you need to stand out from the crowd. Uh, if you want, let's make a social experiment right now. Can I please have a show of hands people who have not heard of Render Street prior to today and did not know what Render Street was? Okay, everybody knew. Thank you. I'm flattered. 
But uh, the point is, uh, some people still don't know what render state is. We, we see that every day. And we are a company that has been in the space for seven years. Uh, we have some unique features and unique uh, products that we, we do in the market. And still, people have not heard about us. Now, think about it. If you are the one that uh, you want people to be hearing about, uh, the competition is not with people in Poland, but with people around the world. And uh, there are tens of thousands of freelancers that you compete with. People from Russia, people from India, people from everywhere around the world. So you need to stand out. Uh, so uh, getting back to uh, ways of making money, how can you make money with uh, your skills? Well, first of all, you could get a job. It's the simplest way. Just go to uh, a number of studios, apply for positions that have, they have opened, and get hired, get a job, uh, work uh, the, regular hour, the regular hours per week, and that's fine. Or you can uh, freelance. You can work on your own, choose your own projects that you work on, hunt for projects that uh, will, get you, uh, will get you started or you will get you uh, working throughout the month so you can make a living out of it. You can also create or sell content like Gleb does, for instance, or like Andrew Price does. You can create videos, tutorials, or even books. Uh, there's a, a great book about Blender uh, written by a friend of ours, uh, so, which sells in, in very good numbers. So you can do all of these things. It's up to you to decide which path you need to take. But uh, moving back to freelancing, because uh, I think this is one of the lowest hanging fruits, the, the easiest to start, for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, because you get to choose your working hours uh, and the projects that you work on, so you can put a lot more passion into it than you would put in a regular job. Uh, second, because you get instant reward. You get paid immediately after uh, completing a job. And uh, you can apply your knowledge immediately. So uh, I'll talk about this uh, a bit more. So how do you find work as a freelancer? Well, it's easy. Uh, there are a number of websites. There's Upwork. Uh, there's freelancer.com. There's uh, uh, Suji Trader. Even the, the Blender community have a, has a section about uh, finding jobs. Uh, or the Blender Artist website. So, uh, any, any, any site uh, you want, just create an account on it, uh, apply for jobs. That's easy. Sorry. The next step is a bit more complicated, and the next step is setting the price for your work. So the, the price of uh, your contract is uh, composed mainly out of two things. Uh, the hourly price you value your work for, and the number of hours you estimate to put into that uh, particular job. There are, of course, other, other additional costs to it that uh, you might have factor in. Like, for instance, if you want to outsource the rendering to a render farm, uh, that may be an added cost, but you can either uh, incorporate that into the main project cost or you can pass it separately to the client. But that's another discussion. So, how do you set your hourly rate? Because that's a question uh, you might have. Well, an easy way. Uh, would be to think about how much money you would like to make in a month from this, from doing freelance work. So let's say you want to do uh, 2,000 euros per month, and uh, you want to do this working every day, so, and you estimate that you won't find enough projects to fill eight hours per day uh, for your work, but you'll only find projects enough to fill six hours of your of every day that you work. So dividing 2,000, the amount you want to make, by 21 days, the, num the average number of working days in a month by six hours, results in approximately 16 euros per hour. So that could be your base rate. Uh, as a, uh, of course, every, everything that I say now is not set in stone. Uh, this is just an idea of how to approach things uh, in order to get started. You can make adjustments out of it. If you're very good at it, you can find work to, to cover 14 hours a day. And if you're young and you can work 14 hours a day every day. Or uh, if you really suck at it, 
uh, you can get only work to cover four hours on, of your workday. You can also work freelance after your regular job. So things uh, vary from every particular situation, but uh, I wanted to give you uh, some idea where to start from. Okay, so we have this rate, 16, hours per, 16 uh, euros per hour, and let's say you find a project that you estimate it will take you 100 hours to complete. Okay, so 16 euros per hour times uh, 100 hours means 1,600 euros. So that's the final bid for your project, right? No, of course not. Because uh, when creating a project, there are various things that you need to take into account. First of all, is that uh, the customer will, might want to negotiate. Uh, most people like to negotiate. In some cultures, it, it's mandatory to negotiate. Uh, and generally, people feel, feel better if they manage to shave a bit of the top of the price that you give them. So uh, this means that you have to be prepared to negotiate and to pre be prepared to uh, cut a bit of the total price of the project for the customer satisfaction. So let's, let's say this could add uh, at maybe 10% on the top of the fee that we already calculated. Then there are revisions. As you create artwork and not mathematics, uh, your vision of the artwork can be and probably will be different than the client's vision of the artwork. So uh, you may come to a point that uh, you present the final or the close to final version of the project to the client and he says, yeah, but this car should have been green, not red, and should have been moving from left to right and not from right to left. And this guy over here should have been over here, sorry, should have been over here. So you'll have to redo the entire animation to retexture the car to, uh, and re-render it because rendering it uh, takes time. So you have to factor in this time as well into your bid. Uh, you can depending on uh, how you agree with the client, you can, first of all, factor uh, some, of some degree of revisions in the base bid, or you can uh, negotiate it with him uh, to be paid by the hour for future revisions. It's up to you. And then there's the project management time. Uh, you'll have to talk to the client, and if uh, the client is not face-to-face -face with you and is online, those talk could could take several hours before you, because you'll have to understand what the client wants, you'll have to present him your vision, and so on. And then you'll have to discuss along the project to show him intermediate work, and so on. Uh, so, and then he'll have feedback, and it, it will be a back and forth that will uh, consume a number of hours from your time. Also, you may need to do paperwork for, uh, for your freelancing uh, work, declare taxes, and so on. Uh, to do accounting because some customers will want uh, detailed accounting of your uh, work time and so on. So all of these are in fact the total time you spend on a project, not just the modeling and the animated and texturing time. So uh, coming back to the initial quote, if, you, if there's a new client and you don't know uh, how this works with him, uh, it could be a safe bet to add 75 80 or even 100% to the base price that you calculated initially. So instead of uh, 1,600 euros, you could bid uh, 2,500 or even uh, 3,000 euros for this project. Of course, if you've worked with the client previously and you know how it goes, you know that he's not very demanding or, or you know that he explains very well and he likes your, uh, your graphic style and your animation style and it's okay with it, and so you won't you won't have very long back and forth with him, uh, you, can, you can cut the estimate back to the normal. Or um, if you know that he doesn't negotiate because uh, he, uh, he accepts all, all the quotes that you've given him in the past, uh, again, you can uh, reduce the overhead put down for estimation. Okay, uh, of course, you can make exceptions from that. Uh, when you're at the beginning and you want to build your showreel and you need projects desperately, uh, you can work for a lower rate, so just for the purpose of building your portfolio so you can sell yourself in the future. 
uh, or if there's a, a project that you absolutely want to take on, uh, I don't know, a very important client, uh, I don't know, Adidas or Nike comes to you and they want to work with you and you want to put them in your portfolio, you can uh, work with a lower rate. But you have to remember that starting at a lower base rate with a customer means that in the future it will be difficult to raise that rate for the same customer because they will expect you to work at the initial rate that you uh, have given them. And another thing that you need to consider is that you have to be in the market. Uh, you've seen the, uh, in the Upwork screenshot I, I, I showed you before that all the artists on Upwork uh, have public uh, hourly rates. So you can take that as a benchmark and uh, find some artists that have similar skills with yours and see what the hourly rates they have and uh, then you can uh, work something out in those terms. Uh, another indicator is that if you do a lot of bidding for projects and the majority of them are rejected because of high bid price, that's an indicator that you need to work something out on your bids. Okay, uh, now about selling yourself. Uh, as I said, you need additional skills uh, to get in front of everyone, of everyone else. And uh, one of them is uh, setting up the right price for the work. And the other one is actually getting the customer to see you or the, the employer if you want to take on a job. So the easiest way for an artist is uh, to do this is to create a showreel. Of course, uh, this is easy only when I say it, but when you get to do it, it's not that easy anymore. First of all, because at, at the beginning, you won't have enough projects to show for. So you'll have to uh, work on some uh, project for your own, so on, or just for the purpose of building the showreel. And then when you get successful as a freelancer, uh, we have a word, uh, a saying in Romanian, it says it's translated roughly like uh, the shoemaker works with broken shoes, which is actually true in this, uh, in this area as well, because you won't have time to create your showreel because you'll always, always be working. But my advice is to break out some of that time and actually make the showreel at least once a year. Because people will want, this is your business card, this is what you do, and you want to show people what you can do, not explain them. Because it's difficult to explain an animation, yeah. You, in fact, you cannot, but when people see it, they realize what you can do. The next thing you, you need to do is a resume, because some people will want to see a showreel, some people will want to see your resume. And again, uh, spend a few, a few hours to make a good-looking resume, and more importantly, a resume should show in the first five seconds of reading it what you can do and what you know how to do best, because this is the time uh, a recruiter or uh, an, interest, an interested person will take in scanning uh, one artist after another. And uh, the, final, the final advice is be visible. Uh, I've encountered, since working with Ernest, I've encountered cases, and not very few, of artists that I wasn't able to find their contact data online. So uh, I know they existed because uh, I found the names, but when I tried to contact them, I couldn't find the contact info. And this is kind of defeats the purpose. I know, you know, uh, when you want people to hire you, they should be able to find you first, right? And uh, as a final, uh, as a final advice that would, I, I would like to give and this is a personal one, uh, you have to be honest throughout the entire process. You have to be honest with yourself first, and then you have to be honest with the customer. If you're not honest with yourself, uh, you might find yourself in a position in a few years from now that you don't like what you're doing, and this won't be nice. So be honest with yourself and make sure that what you're doing right now is what you like to do. And also be honest with the customers because burning a few customers to get a quick buck is not a sustainable way of doing business. And in the end, it will backfire. So always be honest, both with you and uh, with the customers. Okay, uh, I know this is uh, a very, very short introduction of the topic. Uh, 
If uh, I can talk about it more uh, in private, if you want, or if you have any questions, I could I, I could uh, answer them. I'd be happy to. I'll be here for the entire event. And now, uh, with your permission, I'd like to talk about uh, RenderSuite for a bit, because we've had some new things, and uh, it will be very brief. I I, I can tell you that. So uh, RenderSuite. We started out in 2012. Uh, because uh, one of our, our co-founders needed a render farm and we couldn't really find one online that worked. And so we decided to build one ourselves. And seven years later, uh, we are the most recommended service for Blender. And uh, there are a number of reasons for that. Uh, the first one is that we provide some unique benefits, like the monthly plan on the state one. Uh, we are the only, one that, the only ones that have that kind of plan. Uh, it starts at $50 per month, that's 45 euros, and it's render all you can. Uh, and it's a, it's a great tool for people that are at the beginning or have limited budgets or just have a computer at home and want to use it for something else. So just send the renders away and uh, you use your computer for something else. Sorry. Um, and one important thing to note about this is that even if it's a low-cost plan, it benefits from all the things that we offer. So we, it, it has support, uh, it has privacy, which I believe it's, it's an important thing. Um, we have built our entire platform to be private and secure on several layers, including from code level, which have been, uh, we have been building it in-house for, for the past seven years, uh, up to operation and infrastructure. So you know that your project will not be rendered in some guy's basement or uh, who, know where, who knows where. So we guarantee that whatever projects you submit to us, you'll be the only one having access to them uh, and getting back the renders. Uh, one of the other, other reasons that uh, we are where we are is that we offer some unique features like EV support. Everybody here has heard about EV. We've had support from, for it uh, since November last year, so uh, that's uh, 12 months already, since the Blender 380 was in beta. We are, after all this time, we are still the only render farm having support for it. And this says a lot of, about our technology. Also, uh, we have a unique mindset. We are a technology company, um, so, uh, and we do update for our software quite often. So this year alone, we've done over 50 updates to our software platform, whether you see, saw them or not. So that's one update per week. And whether you see them or you don't, but uh, you benefit from them directly. Uh, one of the updates we have been working on and which is ready to be launched in, a, in the next weeks or months is our new interface. Uh, the, if you use the industry so far, you see that this is a very deep very big departure from the old interface. Uh, it's nicer, it's easier to use, it's compatible with all the devices, phone, tablets, and so on, and it has a number of new features. So if you are using Android, I encourage you to use this new interface right now. Uh, I can give you the uh, access URL for it. And finally, uh, if there is one thing to remember from this presentation is that Android delivers. Uh, we've had a uh, delivery rate a success rate from delivering projects of over 99% for the past years now. Uh, we are working very hard uh, for this because we want to give you the certainty that whatever project you send our way, no matter how big or how small, it gets done and it gets done fast. Uh, that, that was all about uh, my presentation today. Thank you all for uh, watching. And if uh, there are people here that are using Render State, thank you for your support and you, you're helping us move forward. Thank you. And now, let's get some lunch. <laughs>